If we're looking at doing a Roth conversion, what is the best way to pay the tax? Welcome to Barry's Bites. Please join our host, attorney and financial advisor, Chris Barry. There's two ways that we can look at doing this. One is, okay, let's say we do a Roth conversion. And so let's say we have 100,000 inside of the IRA and understand that the best money, given the taxes are going up, is tax free money. Like that's the best money. Second best money is taxable money. Third best or worst is tax deferred. So ideally I want to get as much as possible into this best bucket, which is a tax free bucket. So if I have a Roth conversion or if I have a hundred thousand dollars in my IRA, ideally I want to move that hundred thousand dollars over to the Roth. But if I do that, understand I have to pay a tax of 20,000. And so the best way to pay the tax is if you have cash pulling this money from a taxable account. So pulling the money from like checking savings. So you move 100,000 from the traditional IRA, put it over into the Roth. Now there's 100,000 there. You have a $20,000 tax bill. And if you have the cash, you pay the tax out of the cash, out of the taxable account to maximize the amount you're getting into the tax-free account. Now that's ideal. I would say 90% of the time, we don't do it that way. The reason is we always don't have a lot of cash on hand, especially when we're doing big Roth conversions or big IRA exit strategies. The second way, and this is the way that we normally do it just because the way that people's assets are structured is that, okay, let's say we do this IRA exit strategy, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to withhold the taxes. So this is a way that if you don't have a lot of cash, to do the Roth conversion. It's a strategy on how to still get his money into that tax-free account and participate in that IRA exit strategy. It's not as ideal, but again, there's sometimes like the ideal best way to do it. And then the real world, this is the hand we're dealt and we play the best cards possible. So in that situation, let's say we still have that $100,000 IRA, but maybe we don't have the cash on hand to pay the tax. So what we could do is say, okay, you know what? I'm going to send $80,000 to the Roth. And then of that $100,000, what I'm going to do is send $20,000 to the IRS. So the net effect of this is we haven't touched your cash on hand. So that checking savings, your emergency fund, we haven't touched that. So if you're cash poor, we can still do the Roth conversion. But now instead of putting $100,000, we're just putting $80,000 into the Roth. The remaining twenty dollars would then go to the IRS. And then when we do this, we don't have to worry about any tax bills at the end of the year because we've already sent the money to the IRS. So it's not as ideal. This is typically the way that we do it is we just withhold the taxes. So instead of sending $100,000 from the traditional IRA to the Roth, we send $80,000 from the traditional IRA to the Roth, $20,000 would go to the IRS. Some things that we have to be careful for, this really is for people over 59 and a half. Otherwise, they could say that this is a penalty of withdrawing money from a pre-tax account prior to 59 and a half. But I would say 90% of the time, this is the way that we do it. Maybe 10% of the time, this is how we do it. Either way, both are great because both are getting money out of these tax deferred, tax infested accounts, getting the money into something that's better, whether it's a tax free account or even just getting it into a taxable account, that's better than that tax deferred account. And so when we're doing this, when I say doing it intelligently and smartly, this is where we look at the numbers. We look at the tax brackets. We look at the investable assets. We look at this window that's closing with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. We look at other factors, like are we concerned about long-term care? in the future. And then every situation is a little bit different. So there's no hard and fast rule. But to answer the question, those are the two ways that we look at paying the taxes when we're engaging in this IRA exit strategy. 